This episode of Soldier Knows Best is brought to you by Netflix. Hey, what's up, guys? Soldier Knows Best here. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the new NVIDIA Shield. This is the latest portable game device to come out, and it is running a full version of Android. You have access to all the games in the Google Play Store and some other stuff covering the hardware. I'm going to go over all of that stuff to see whether this is going to be a good buy for you. So it's going to start the review and take a look at the hardware. Now, I like the design of this shield. It's a very cool looking device. It's going to catch anybody's eye once they take a look at it. And when it's fully closed, it's portable enough to where it's not going to fit in your pocket, but it'll go into a laptop bag or a book bag very easily. And weight wise, you're not going to have a problem with it at all. And then on the front, they have this face plate or just this cover that you can actually remove. It's magnetic, so it slides right off. And I think in the future, they may start selling some customizable covers that you can go ahead and kind of pimp your NVIDIA shield out. Now, on the back of the shield, you can find a micro SD card slot, a mini HDMI and also a micro USB port and also the headphone jack and then you also find the shoulder buttons and also the two trigger buttons now in order to get to the rest of the controls you need to flip open the screen of the Nvidia shield and then you'll find the control layout and now you'll find the rotational d-pad you also find dual analog sticks and also you'll find the a x y and b buttons and then in the middle you'll find a volume control button kind of a playback button there a back button home button and also right there in the middle is the power button and that's also the Nvidia shield button that you'll be able to use to get into the video shield store and some other things now I really do love these controls it feels a lot like the Xbox 360's controller now the analog stick and the d-pad layout isn't exactly the same but it's that that type of feeling that you get from holding this controller and even just the way your fingers rest on the back of the device they have the right amount of curves going on there where your fingers just kind of grip the Nvidia shield to allow you to be able to get the best gaming experience out of the controller so I mean if I had to give the controller a scale of 1 to 10 I have a get of a solid 9.5 and now let's take a look at the internals of this NVIDIA Shield. It does feature the NVIDIA Tegra 4 quad-core mobile processor alongside 2 gigabytes of RAM. It does have 16 gigabytes of flash memory, which is not that much when you think of a portable gaming console. Now, that could be offset by the micro SD card slot in the future, where they're going to be releasing a software update to allow you to actually store apps on that micro SD card. But for right now, I'm already maxed out on the internal storage with movies and music and games. Uh, so that's one thing I think they should have had ready at launch. But then also you'll find Bluetooth 3.0, you'll find GPS, no NFC though. And then they threw in a 28.8 watt hours battery. And I found that the battery life on this shield is very impressive. I was able to watch a full two hour movie, play a couple games on my flight, and I was able to still land with about 50% battery left. So the shield is going to be able to let you game for a long time. And the Shield is also a really good performer when it comes to the benchmarking tests. I was able to do a couple of benchmarking tests with Geekbench 3 and also Quadrant. And I found that the Shield is capable of doing anything on a mobile space, playing any mobile game that you need to. Uh, but also, too, it looks to be very set for the future games that should be coming out for it. And now on to the display. Now the Shield is rocking a 5-inch 1280 by 720 HD multi-touch retinal quality display uh, that has 294 PPI to pixels per inch. Now the screen may sound small at first because there's a lot of cell phones out on the market right now that have bigger screens. Uh, but I think it's, a, it's a, a pretty nice size screen. I would like to see a little bit bigger in the future because it does have a good amount of bezel going around the screen. I think they can go ahead and stretch that screen out in the next version. Uh, but as far as the quality, the screen is very sharp. And also I like that the display can actually go back 100 and 80 degrees so you can get the right angle to your liking if there's sunlight and stuff coming in uh, you can adjust that display um, so overall I really do like the display I just would like to see a little bit bigger and take advantage of that extra bezel space it has there in the future and now let's go ahead and talk software. Now, NVIDIA Shield is running Android 4.2.1 Jelly Bean right now, but I'm pretty sure it'll be updated to 4.3 here in the near future. And it runs Android with no problem at all. With relative ease, it's able to zoom through whatever you throw at it. And so you can navigate Android just by using the touch screen, just like you would do on a cell phone or a tablet. Uh, but you can also use the physical controls like the right analog stick that would turn into a virtual mouse that you can use to uh, move around the OS. But now let's go ahead and get into the games because this is the most important part of this review. This Nvidia Shield. It has very awesome hardware. It running Android, which is a very good thing in a lot of different ways. But what about the games? Well, the Nvidia Shield has access to all the different games and applications in the Google Play Store, so you can basically play anything you want to. Now, the problem is that all of those games aren't optimized to take advantage of the physical controls on this Nvidia Shield. So if you run into the game that needs you to play it in portrait mode and it's only touchscreen only, uh, you're gonna have a problem with the Shield because you're gonna have to hold it sideways. It's just not really built for that. Uh, so Temple Run is a, definitely a, a good example how this is not going to be a very fun time to play that game uh, but other games that you, you can play in landscape mode it's not going to be too bad once you bend the screen all the way back um, it wasn't too uncomfortable for me but the real lore of this Nvidia Shield is playing games that are optimized for the controls now they do throw in the Nvidia Shield store that you can access by pressing that Nvidia Shield button and this is where you're going to be able to see all the games that are optimized for the Shield 
And so I played a variety of games like Real Boxing and Sonic and Crazy Taxi and Shadow Gun and Grand Theft Auto and all these games run with ease on the shield. Uh, you can tell all that that power inside of this thing is able to run these games with no problems. And I like that developers are on board trying to optimize the games with the controls. But the main problem I find with this shield and the games that are available for is that none of them really push the shield to the limit. The shield has a lot of horsepower underneath the hood, uh, but none of the games are really just kind of pushing it to where I think it should be to make me feel that I'm really getting a, a premium experience on this premium portable device over a cell phone. Now I've watched some video of Dead Trigger 2 being played on the video shield and that takes advantage of the Tegra 4 processor and that game looks sick for a mobile device. So we do have some, some hope on the horizon for the shield. Just right now it's not going to be any premium games for it that are designed to take advantage of all the power. Now Nvidia tried to combat this a little bit by allowing you to do PC streaming on the shield. But now you just can't use any computer with this PC stream. You have to meet a certain amount of system requirements like running Windows 8 or Windows 7, uh, having a GeForce GTX 650 or higher and little things like that and then once you get through the setup you download all the drivers make sure steam is updated because that's how it's working with this pc streaming via steam you simply go into the pc games beta section and just choose which game you want to play and the way the streaming works is that it's basically just mirroring whatever's going on in your computer to the nvidia shield so while you're playing a game there's very little lag to it at all i really didn't notice any lag at all so it's going to be a very good experience if you're playing first person shooter games and other games like that but what that means is that that computer is basically useless like nobody can get on that computer and just minimize it game window and start surfing the web uh, that game is going to be running on that computer and nobody can really touch it uh, while you're gaming and then this also limits you to be able to only use this feature in your house so you can't travel into a hotel and jump on a wi-fi network and start playing the game on your home computer so it's kind of pointless in some way to say i got this fully functional computer right here but i'm gonna play on my nvidia shield uh but i guess it's, it's gonna be cool if you want to play on your couch or play in bed or something like that but i'm pretty sure your your wife or your girlfriend may be mad at you for that but overall the pc streaming did work well especially for it being beta and so with that being said let me go ahead and wrap up my review of this shield now i love the hardware the hardware is pretty much spot on i would like to see a bigger display in the future and also too it would be cool if the display can actually swivel around and fold flat onto the controls uh, for all those touchscreen only games that would be a really cool thing in the future but for right now i feel that this has the best controls of any portable gaming system on the market right now the only crush that it has right now is just the software and what i mean by software is there's no games that really push it to the limit and take advantage of all the the power that's inside of this thing now that can definitely be remedied in the future with developers jumping on board and especially with games like dead trigger 2 and other games coming out that should showcase what this shield can do but for right now we're left with a device that has all the potential in the world but just not reaching it it's kind of where lebron was at one point and so for me i'm really interested in the future of the nvidia shield i do pick it up a couple of times a day and play some games on it so it does have my attention right now but we see how that is in a few months so if you're interested in buying the nvidia shield it will be running you 299 dollars but this brings it into my review of this NVIDIA Shield, leave your comment down below what you think about this bad boy. But before we officially do get out of here, it's going to take one let's look at our sponsor. And today's sponsor is Netflix. Now, if you don't know, Netflix is the place to go for streaming movies and TV shows, no matter where you are to your cell phone, to your TV, uh, to your Xbox, your PlayStation, your Nintendo Wii, almost every device right now has a compatible Netflix application where you can watch this content on the go. So they have thousands of titles to choose from, so you'll never be bored. If you want to get a free trial membership right now, you can go to netflix.com forward slash soldier. Again, that's netflix.com forward slash soldier to get your free trial membership. All right, like always, all the links to my social networks are down below, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Follow me all those different places. And thanks for watching this video, guys, and I will catch you later. Peace.